Hey you guys, so in today's class, we are going to be going over chapter eight, facial treatments. It's a very important chapter. We are going to be using our Milady Standard Aesthetics book. So please make sure you have this book out along with your matching theory workbook because we will be reviewing the exam review questions on our chapter eight theory workbook. All right, so I hope you guys will be following along with me and making any notes. All right, so we're going to be reviewing chapter eight, which is facial treatments. Again, we're using our standard Milady textbook, which is the big one, and it starts on page 297, okay, 297. This was a very long chapter, and I have, what, three videos of me reading this chapter word for word. It is a long one. I would suggest that before this review that you guys listened to me or yourself, obviously, you're, you're always welcome to read the chapter on your own or you can listen to me read. Explaining the importance of facial treatments. Obviously, once you are starting to offer facial treatments, you want to be able to know exactly what kind of treatments are best for your clients, right? Depending on their skin needs. So facial treatments are the actual core introductory treatments that estheticians perform that lead to other more advanced services, right? And they are result-oriented services, which in return results in repeated appointments for, uh, from your clients in the building of, solid, of a solid clientele base. I've always told my students that you guys need to understand that if you go into business for yourself right after graduating, aesthetic school, you want to have patience and know that it takes a little bit of time to build, okay? Um, hardly any student really has a large established clientele, you know, as soon as they get out of school. it You know, you start off with friends and family, which is normal, and then obviously referrals, right? But it does take a little time, I would say up to about a year to a year and a half to actually build a solid clientele, so you have to be ready. So the basic facial treatment procedures is covered in this chapter. However, there are many different types of facials and methods. Once you have mastered the basic routine, you can implement new steps and changes into the routine that can be based on the client's individual skin needs. So this is what this chapter is all about. So benefits of a facial, okay? A facial is a professional service that is designed to improve the appearance of the facial skin. This typically includes deep cleansing, such as extractions, hydration, massage, mask, application of mild peels, okay? Possible use of skin treatment machines, and finally, the application of serums, moisturizers, and sunscreen. All of this information should already be highlighted, and of course, I have it here highlighted on my book, so you guys can also follow along. So the benefits are, it helps deep cleanse the skin, exfoliate, increase the circulation and detoxifies the skin. Of course, it relaxes the senses, nerves, and muscles, slows down symptoms of premature aging. And of course, we all love that, right? Addresses conditions such as dryness, oiliness, and redness in the skin. Helps lessen the appearance of blemishes and minor acne. Provides access to estheticians' expertise for it at-home skincare maintenance, supports skin's health, and making good lifestyle choices. All of that, it's all in one, right? All right, so let's now go to page 300. It is talking about exceptional skills, right? So knowledge of skin histology, skin analysis, and skincare products is essential for an esthetician to make informed decisions about, you know, for the client. Additionally, knowledge of contraindications, meaning, you know, what are you not allowed to do based on your client's health history, for example, that's going to prevent you from giving them an actual treatment. That is all very important during your client's consultation, okay? Um, mastering retail sales. Again, retailing and client consultations are another part of the job that requires proper training, and you should have a star and have that highlighted as well. You guys, continuing education. I am a big advocate for continuing education. 
it, you know, this is just the beginning. Okay, this is just the beginning. You will be uh, required to do continuing education in this industry. It is very, very important. This is the fundamental training of aesthetics, but continuing education is key for you to keep growing. Once you guys have figured out what skincare line you want to work with, of course, because I work with Glymed Plus and SkinScript, I, you know, I always talk to you guys about those two lines, but I have provided you guys with a list of a lot of other skincare brands out there. There's many, many out there that are really good. I would say do your research, but just make sure that whichever line you decide to go with, there are big on continuing education and providing a lot of additional information for you so that you become more knowledgeable on the products that they offer, okay? So again, that's on page 300. We're on 301. Again, we're still using our um, standard aesthetics book, which is the big one. On page 301, it's talking about key elements of client interaction, okay? Making sure that your client is comfortable, all right? Right in the middle, it says, help the client to relax by speaking in a quiet, professional manner. Provide a professional atmosphere and work efficiently. Make sure that the client is comfortable. Make sure that the bed is uh, obviously proper, that you have a proper bed and chair uh, are all important. Always wear disposable gloves. Keep your nails smooth and short to avoid scratching the client's skin. Removing any rings, bracelets, or anything that may be distracting during the treatment. Always be aware of your touch and the amount of pressure you apply to the face. Okay, again, all of this is very important. And you guys, you know, asking the client if the pressure is okay is always important. And I always like to let them know to inform me from the very beginning versus me having to ask them continuously throughout the entire hour that they're with me. I just like to say, let me know if the pressure ever, ever becomes too heavy uh, at any point. Same thing when it comes to them making sure that they're aware of their feeling like they're having an allergic reaction to any of the products that I'm using throughout the treatment to let me know versus me asking them after each step. Just say at any point during the facial treatment, if you feel like you're have experiencing any type of reaction, burning, excessive itchiness. Now, slight tingle, like I mentioned last week, a slight tingle, sometimes that is normal depending on the products that you are using. Now, excessive burning, excessive itchiness, is not so you want to make sure that they're aware um and to obviously let you know therefore you can stop the service and remove the product immediately okay all right let's see 302 we're on page 302 again i'm not reading everything word for word we're just kind of reviewing the chapter okay at the very bottom meeting and greeting new clients one of the most important communications you will have with a client happens the first time you meet them. So obviously you want to be polite, friendly, and inviting, okay? To develop long-term relationships, you guys, you need to give great service every time your clients comes in to see you. Remember that your clients are literally your walking advertisement, okay? If just is just an example if i had a friend that maybe suffered from acne and all of a sudden i see her and i see that her face is cleared up i'm gonna be like oh my goodness your face looks good you look great you know are you seeing an esthetician or most likely she's going to let me know that she's seeing a professional and it's gonna probably lead me to say give me her information i want to go i want to go in for a treatment you know and it doesn't necessarily always have to be to treat a specific issue it could just be maintenance again even if you have normal great skin you should still see an esthetician for maintenance right and preventative so it's still still very relaxing either way always approach a client with a smile always introduce yourself to new clients and greet your returning clients by name all right always set a few minutes aside to kind of show the client around obviously if you are in a full service salon there's going to be different areas maybe a larger space obviously if you're working for yourself if you simply have a small suite you still want to make sure that they're aware of where the restroom is and all of that and where they can change be professional at all times you guys Prepare the client for the facial treatment, okay? Make sure that the client knows how to change into their robe or spa wrap, all right? Let them know that they can remove their shoes and where they can change. Again, explain what clothing can be removed. 
Let the client know the neck and shoulders are usually bare for the facial. All right, assist them if they need assistance as far as getting on the bed, or you can always provide a step stool as well, okay? All right, you guys, let's skip over to, on page 306, it's going over the initial consultation and analysis, obviously to be able to determine products and procedures. This is on page 306, and then it's going on showing like a questionnaire, asking a lot of questions. How do they wash their face? Do they use moisturizers? Are they on any type of special diet? All of this information is on page 309, okay? On page 310, it's going over proper client draping and hand washing, okay? You guys already know how to do all of that, right? Proper draping of the hair for the client before you get started. Perform an initial skin analysis, analysis and agree on a treatment plan. We are going to be going over skin analysis very soon, so I will show you guys uh, in detail how you will go about performing one. Creating a treatment plan, bottom of page 310. Once you have familiarized yourself with your client's skin and their concerns, you need to formulate a clear and precise plan of action. Create a treatment plan to show your client that you are educated and prepared to treat the concerns they may have. Explain the benefits of the products and services you offer and answer any questions that the client may have, okay? It's a simple plan to develop the treatment you will implement for your clients on figure 813. They are on page 311 at the top, okay? Obviously, you guys, you know that you always want to wash your hands before starting any treatment and put on gloves. Cleanse to remove impurities and makeup before the in-depth skin analysis and facial treatment. Proper cleansing is imperative to the success of your facial treatment because not all skin types and concerns are the same. There are many different cleansing formulas such as rich creamy cleansers to very lightweight foaming cleansers. Based on the skin analysis, choose a cleanser based on the client's skin type and concerns, okay? If your client is coming in and they are wearing makeup such as eye makeup and lipstick, um, you want to go ahead and remove that first um, obviously doing a double cleanse is very important as well to help remove as much of that as possible. Page 312, it's talking about, again, the cleansing, the toners, the in-depth skin analysis, which we will do that in person, okay? On page 314, exfoliation products or mask. A lot of information, again, this chapter was extremely, extremely long, okay? And I hope that you guys reviewed it and went over it, okay? Now, when it comes to the exfoliation, there's different methods that can be used, right? That you can do during the exfoliation. So we have mechanical exfoliants, chemical exfoliants, and electrotherapy. Exfoliation products are discussed in chapter six, which we will get to very soon. So a mechanical exfoliation, you guys, is the use of a rotary brush, for example, or something like a microdermabrasion machine. When applied to the skin, this will gently remove dead skin cells and aid in a deeper cleansing. You also have granular or manual exfoliating exfoliation. It is used when you are using products that have the jojoba beads or like a rice bran wax to help remove the dead skin um, cells and debris by manipulation with your fingertips, okay? Then you have what is chemical exfoliation. That is when you use enzymes, okay? And also alpha hydroxy acids, also known as AHAs, and beta hydroxy acids, which are BHAs, right? So we will learn a lot more about chemical exfoliations very, very soon, okay? Disincrustation, that is also something else that we will talk about. Disincrustation with a galvanic machine. So the use of disincrustation solution or a mask if, perform, if performing extractions. Disincrustation, you guys, is the process used to soften and emulsify sebum, meaning oil, okay, such as comedones, which are blackheads in the follicles. So for blackhead extractions, if the blackheads are very deep and have been 
lodged in the skin for a while, they tend to be a little harder to extract. So you will need to further soften the keratinized sebum. So for this purpose, there is something called disincrustation solution that is used in conjunction with a galvanic machine that can be very helpful. This is a solution that softens the sebaceous materials, again, the oil, the dirt, the debris, around the edges of the pore or follicle opening. This helps soften the comedones, again, blackheads or whiteheads, making the extractions easier with minimal trauma to the surrounding tissue. Okay. Then we have the use of steam or warm towels. You guys know that this helps to soften the skin, and promotes more effective cleansing, okay? S using steam is a staple, you know, in this industry. Obviously, if you're working with someone, you guys, that has sensitive skin, rosacea, you want to avoid using a lot of steam, okay? Steam is typically used before deep pore cleansing. Steaming uses a warm, humid mist to soften the skin and allows for easier removal of comedones the steamer nozzle, you guys, is placed approximately 18 inches away from the client's face, okay? Check to make sure that the client is comfortable and does not feel claustrophobic. The nozzle can be positioned above or below the client's face. All of this should be highlighted and put stars next to it. It'll help you answer your chapter eight test if you haven't already kind of figured that out. Do not use on inflamed skin. Again, hypersensitive or rosacea skin. So very, very, very good stuff. On page 316, again, extractions, deep pore cleansing. It's going over massage, treatment mask. There's different types of masks out there, you guys, for different skin types. Then we have our toners, serums, moisturizers, all of that. We know that massage promotes relaxation, stimulates blood circulation, helps with muscle tone, cleanses the skin of impurities, softens sebum, helps to slither off dead skin cells, helps relieve muscle pain and tension, right? So the massage part, like I always say, it's, you know, the client's favorite part of the treatment. F client's favorite part of the treatment. So mastering good massage techniques is very important. I know this is just the beginning for you guys, but I promise you, you guys will get there, right? You guys will be able to amazing facial massages. On page 318, obviously sun protection products. I cannot stress that enough. The final step of a facial should be the application of a full spectrum sunscreen. A full spectrum sunscreen protects the skin from both UVA and UVB rays. So both the burning ray and the aging ray. Application of sunscreen is especially necessary following the use of acids, you know, AHAs or BHAs in general. Okay, it is very increasing sun sensitivity. And so never let your client walk out of their treatment room with a freshly exfoliated face without the use of sunscreen. Very, very important. Okay. Completing the service. Explain the client what to do next. For example meet you outside or in the reception area. If your clients, if you guys have retail for sale, for instance, it will be the perfect time to do any product recommendations, write them a at home care, skincare routine that they can follow if they don't already have one, write them a little prescription plan is what I like to say, provide them with all of this information. You guys, a lot of times clients don't do these things because they don't know what to do. They don't know what products they need. They don't know how to apply them. So you as a professional need to provide them with this information, okay? And it is just gonna take you a few minutes out of your time. And if it's going to keep your client coming back and you having a loyal client, then you need to do what it takes to do that and make them feel comfortable, right? Sometimes clients get a little shy or embarrassed. What else do we have? On page 321, Discuss variations of the basic facial. Remember that the steps of a facial procedure will vary depending on the focus of the actual facial. Every client is different. 
This is not a one size fits all, definitely not, okay? Sometimes steam or massage is omitted, meaning you do not use them or don't perform those steps, right? Sometimes the massage is the last step after the mask, and sometimes two masks are used versus just one. Massages performed before extractions in the basic facial of this chapter to avoid stimulation that would cause further inflammation. Using massage after extractions could pose possible secondary lesions and clients may experience breakouts. Okay. Other estheticians may choose to massage after the application of a mask as some of the massage creams and oils used in the industry could lock out further product penetration and benefits from the active ingredients of that mask. Does that make sense? And I shared that information with you guys already that sometimes just depending on the client's skin, you will do the mask first and then the massage or the massage and then the mask. It just depends. Okay. On page 321, it's talking about an express facial, also known as a mini facial. You guys, by the end of your course, okay, right before the end of your course, you guys will get an assignment, and I'm going to give you guys the heads up. Your assignment will be to create a service menu of services that you plan on offering. So just have that in mind. As you guys learn new treatments, new techniques, new services, at the end, you're going to create a service menu for me. And honestly, it has helped so many of my students, you know, in the long run, because once you graduate, you don't have to think like, oh, well, what am I going to offer? What am I going to name my, my facial treatments? You will already have that done in a way. So it becomes very helpful and we get to talk about it. We get to give each other feedback on names and prices and all of that. So it's actually a lot of fun. So a mini facial could be something that you offer. Okay, so a mini facial, let's go over to page 322, is usually 15 to 30 minutes, you guys, and does not include all the steps of a 60 to 90 minute facial. So a mini facial is perfect, you guys, for someone who is on the go, someone who is, you know, short on time, perhaps you can call it a lunchtime facial, right? Since it's just 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes. So very, very popular, you guys. An express facial may also focus on only one area of the face, such as the eye contour area, or provide a quick exfoliation and hydration. The express facial gives clients a treatment that can be completed quickly, again, if they're pressed for time and can be performed with other services such as waxing, a manicure, a pedicure. So for men, it can be incorporated in, into a shaving and beard care service if that's something that you would like to offer. An express facial is also a great way to introduce the client to a beneficial service that may lead to them for booking a more in-depth facial, a full facial, okay, a 60 to 90 minute facial. So yes, mini facials are awesome. And on page 322 there in the middle, it's kind of going over the procedures, all right? So usually for a mini facial, you guys, it says omitted steps may include steaming, you know, a massage and extractions. It says cleansing, and masking are the most important elements of an express facial because they produce the most visible results in just 30 minutes. And I completely agree with that. You know, have you guys ever used a really good mask and once you remove it, you're like, oh my goodness, my skin feels great. It feels smooth. It feels hydrated. It looks more plump. So yes, of course, a good mask during a 30 minute mini facial will be very beneficial to the clients and they will see great results. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, hope you guys are still following along and are still with me. We're now on page 323. It is now going to start talking about the different skin types. All right. Now let's start with dry skin. Dry skin is usually the result of underactive sebaceous glands. Okay. Please highlight all of this, you guys, if you don't already have it, that produce sebum meaning we do not produce a lot of oil, which softens the skin, creating a natural moisturizing protective barrier. The skin appears a little coarse, tight, 
dull in color and often with visible lines and wrinkles. It may also become dry from overexposure to sun and wind and harsh soaps, a poor diet, lack of fluid intake, medication, and just environmental factors, you guys, and of course, aging. Dry skin can be caused by genetic dispositions or as a result of just skin aging. As a person advances in years, as we get older, the body's renewal process slows down and the cells are not replaced as quickly as it once was in younger years, okay? Here's a quick chart to refer to on dry skin characteristics. So the treatment goal, you guys, for someone who has dry skin is to hydrate the skin with a rich, creamy mask, rich mask and a creamy cleanser, and as well as gentle form of exfoliation to remove the dead skin cells, dry skin cells, and prevent them from accumulating on the surface. Massage can be very effective for someone who has dry skin. I have dry skin, I think by this point, you guys already know that I say it in just about every video I sent out, I have dry skin. So treatment for dry skin, dry skin or mature skin, the treatment goal is pretty much the same, okay? So to hydrate and nourish the skin as well as to remove accumulated dead skin cells, it's, it's the key. Facial treatment and home maintenance can help minimize the dryness and stimulate the production of sebum, okay? So serums, creams can balance and protect the skin with the appropriate products and in the proper amount. Dehydrated skin. Dehydration of the surface is one of the most common skin problems that there are. Now, the major cause of dehydration is evaporation and loss of oil, okay, sebum, from the surface of the skin due to the use of harsh drying soaps and alkalis, as well as through drier winter months, heat, and changes in climate. A client's skin may have enough oil, you guys, but still feel dry and flaky due to the lack of water in the skin. So can you imagine being dry and dehydrated? Wow, it's like a desert, right? So very important for us to drink tons and tons of water and also doing and using appropriate skincare to help balance our skin. I believe in balancing for sure, okay? Now, now let's talk about what is called, and you guys will see this throughout your career, what is called the transepidermal water loss, also known as T-E-W-L, okay? Please make sure you have that highlighted, you guys. The dehydration of the epidermis, okay, happens through a process called transepidermal water loss. The deeper tissues of the skin comprise large cells loaded with moisture with a moisture differential between the lower layer of 80 percent and the upper layer of 15 percent with such a great difference there will be a natural tendency for the moisture to move from the lower layer to the upper layer via what's called osmosis this movement is called transepidermal water loss the surface of the skin naturally contains lipids, oils, and sebum that create a natural moisture factor. When the stratum corneum is intact and it's healthy, you guys, it serves as an effective barrier to inhibit evaporation from happening. If the cells are packed tightly together, the water cannot get through them. But if the cells are loosely packed and flaking, then the moisture can easily evaporate, okay? In addition to this, the NMF, natural moisturizing factor, has the ability to bind moisture into the skin. When the NMF is washed off the skin with soaps and other alkalized drying products, the cells dry and crack producing dry skin. So keeping our cells healthy, moisturized, and nicely packed is going to prevent what is called 
trans epidermal water loss and making sure that our skin stays moist and hydrated. I hope that made sense and it will, okay? It will slowly. So treatment for dehydrated skin. The treatment goal, you guys, is obviously to restore internal skin hydration and retain inner moisture by preventing trans epidermal water loss, which is what we just discussed, okay? It is important to the health of the skin to maintain the natural moisturizing factor and the natural acid um, mantle. Dehydrated skin is prone to fine lines and wrinkles. It will appear thin and may appear fine in texture, but it's actually coarse to the touch. If the client's skin seems to be dehydrated from factors that require medical attention, such as a diet, lack of fluids, or medication, you as an esthetician should recommend that the client seek advice from their physician or, of course, a dermatologist. All right, now let's get into mature or aging skin. So anti-aging treatments are an important part of our business, you guys. We age from the moment we are born, okay? So the speed at which age leaves, it signs on our, it's a sign in our face and it's influenced not only through time, but by genetic encoding and environmental effects. So changes in our skin, aging, sun-damaged skin is different from youthful, healthy skin. The differences are noticeable in loss of moisture, fine lines and wrinkles, and in the thinning of the epidermis. As skin ages, it undergoes biological changes due to the reduction of estrogen, including reduction in collagen and elastin, which is what we're all trying to keep, right? With each passing year, the average moisture content of the stratum corneum is slightly decreased manifesting in fine lines. The epidermis thins out and the dermal papilla, which is the, the anchor of the epidermis, flattens out, resulting in loose tissue-like texture. The cell renewal rate slows down as we age, you guys, making healing a little bit slower. Circulation becomes impaired. We're now on page 326, resulting in the desquamation becoming uneven, which affects the evenness of skin tone, okay? Pollution, a poor diet, hormones, stress. These are all things, okay, that affect our skin, whether we like to believe it or not, they do, all right? I know we've all said, we've, we've all been there and we've said it, my skin is breaking now, maybe because I'm stressed. You know, we all have those moments or hormones, right? It gets our skin going. On page 328, UV exposure. Sun damage, you guys. The sun, it's basically... Ugh, I can't, I, there's no words. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It affects us in so many ways. So UV exposure, okay? Repeated exposure of ultra UV sun can cause premature aging of the skin and even artificial UV sources can affect clients in stages throughout their life as highlighted in the following. So they're categorized in groups. So group one classified as mild. Wrinkles do not um, form during this stage. Clients see mild pigment changes and minimal wrinkles. Group two classified as moderate. Clients may may present with um, age spots and early signs of parallel smile lines, and they may feel the need to wear foundation to cover facial changes. Group three, classified as advanced. Clients see obvious signs of discoloration on their skin, visible capillaries, and visible keratosis, and they may feel the need to wear heavier foundations. Group four will be classified as severe. Clients may see yellow-gray skin color and wrinkles throughout. Okay, other external factors can increase the appearance of aging in the skin. These include improper and insufficient skin care. Okay, there's so many people out there that are using skin care improperly, they're using the wrong products with the wrong ingredients for their skin type. You will be surprised. Or there are those that use about 20 different products and they're just doing too much to their skin. Medication, you guys, 
poor health, emotional problems, extreme weight loss can result in loss of muscle tone and lined and sagging skin, which in return gives the skin a more aged appearance, right? Because of the loss of elasticity. Lifestyle choices, you guys, such as smoking and the misuse of alcoholic beverages, all of that in the long run does affect and you see a difference in your skin. On page 330, ingredients for mature skin. So aging or sun damaged skin needs antioxidants, topically and orally. Antioxidants such as vitamin A, B3, C, and E. Minerals, you guys, green tea, grapeseed extract, all help protect the body from free radicals. Other beneficial care for aging skin includes protecting the barrier function of the skin and wearing sunscreen, okay? The goal will be to hydrate and revitalize the skin, establish a regularly scheduled skin evaluations that include skin analysis and review with the client in order to make the appropriate product and treatment adjustment for them. And of course, an ongoing program, making sure that they're coming in for regular treatments, at least anywhere between every three to four weeks would be ideal. Okay. On page 331, sensitive and sensitized and rosacea skin. You'll be surprised how many people have sensitive skin, you guys. And by the way, you can become sensitive at some point, even if you don't have or don't consider yourself to have sensitive skin at the moment. You can become sensitive at one point, right? So in addition to redness, you guys, also known as erythema, edema, which is swelling, inflammation and dryness, that is correct characteristics of dermatitis. Sensitive skin also experiences a cascade of free radical activity that causes skin destructive enzymes to form. These enzymes attack the skin's integrity, leading to premature aging in the form of wrinkles and loss of elasticity. Okay, now let's skip over where it says, sensitized skin, right in the middle, can result from over-aggressive exfoliation or from exposure to aggressive environmental factors such as cold, wind, low humidity, and air pollution. This skin may become highly sensitive and needs to be treated as sensitive skin until it returns to its normal state. Irritants and sensitizing ingredients can be essential oils, exfoliants, fragrance, color agents, and preservatives. All of these may cause skin reactions and irritation. Yes, definitely for sure. I've had a few students that while you guys practice with each other, the use of an exfoliant leaves them extremely red or they feel like it was too abrasive on their skin. So honestly, sometimes it's hard to just pinpoint what it might be or to know ahead of time to avoid using certain products and ingredients on clients. A lot of times it's trial and error or of course letting them know, let me know if you feel any type of again irritation while i'm performing performing the treatment and of course you making notes to not to avoid using them obviously the next time the client comes in okay rosacea estheticians cannot treat or diagnose any medical conditions we know that right and rosacea is considered a medical condition this condition typically manifests as redness in the center area of the face including on the cheeks and nose in a butterfly pattern. It is characterized by flare-ups and remissions. Over time, this redness can become more persistently visible. Broken blood vessels can also become more apparent. Left untreated pustules and large inflamed nodules can result that are often misdiagnosed as acne. After a prolonged period, this condition can result in permanent enlargement of the nasal tissue or rhinophema, where the tip of the nose becomes enlarged and red. Eyes can also can become affected, you guys, by appearing watery and bloodshot. This skin condition can be exacerbated by factors such as alcohol, spicy foods, and heat, making its symptoms similar 
to hypersensitive skin. So while estheticians cannot treat rosacea, they must know how to properly provide a facial for a client that does have rosacea. So for someone who has rosacea, aggravators are again, spicy foods, alcohol, heat. So if you are ever dealing with a client that does have it, you will not use, for example, a rotary brush. You would avoid using steam, okay? Perhaps incorporating less hot towels and maybe using cooler towels would be ideal for them, okay? So again, it's about customizing for the client's need, okay? What else? Treatment for sensitive and sensitized skin. Oh, look, it's right there on page 333. <laughs> Cold towels, okay, are vasoconstricting, which means they constrict capillaries and blood flow. A soothing cream or an alginate gel mask is great for calming and toning down the appearance of retinas. Calamine and calcium carbonate powder mixed with aloe or a fresh yogurt are also excellent for sensitive skin. So again, there's just different, different things you can do. These ice globes that you guys see on the book, on the picture are very popular. We have a cold roller here at the school that you guys are always welcome to use. And so yeah, they feel really good on the face and super, super, they come in hand when you are working with someone with sensitive skin or they tend to get red, it feels really good. Next one, treatments for hyperpigmentation. Oh my goodness, I have so much to say about hyperpigmentation. It's something that we all struggle with, okay? All skin types struggle with hyperpigmentation. It is a condition that affects many people, you guys. Sun exposure, medication, chemical reactions caused by dark pigmentation areas on the skin that clients often want to get rid of. We want to get rid of them. We want to make them go away, okay? So ingredients that can help brighten the appearance, you guys, of the skin include kojic acid, alpha arbutin, glycolic acid, mulberry, licorice root, azelaic acid, bearberry, citrix, such as lemon. They work help, you know, they work to help reduce the appearance of dark spots. All of that is at the bottom of page 333, page 334. These ingredients can be used in conjunction with other exfoliating treatments using AHAs and BHAs and other types of exfoliants, okay? Remember though that over exfoliating can cause damage and make hyperpigmentation worse, okay? So making sure that you're doing the right treatment and using the right products is key. Now let's get into treatment for oily skin. Oily to combination skin is caused by overproduction of the sebaceous glands, okay? And is thicker in texture. So if you have oily skin, combination skin, overactive sebaceous glands, meaning that you produce a lot more oil than someone that has drier skin. This skin has enlarged pores that may be filled with sebum, meaning oil, sebum buildup, from the environment as well as from the use of comedogenic makeup and other products. Comedones, you guys, which are blackheads and whiteheads are present. The skin is sallow in appearance and it is more prone to blemishes, but it's less prone to wrinkles and fine lines because the oil acts as a lubricant and a barrier, helping to keep moisture within the skin from evaporating. So there you go. So see, having oily skin is not that bad after all, if it's going to slow down the signs of aging, right? But I know sometimes it can be hard to deal with because with that, like it's saying, it leads to having acne, okay? So describe an acne facial. Skin with acne has many of the same characteristics as oily skin, but hormone stress and other biological factors have caused the formation of acne pustules this is especially common in someone who is younger, but can manifest at any time in a person's life. So even adult acne, you guys, is very much still present, okay? The signs, the first signs of acne are usually seen during puberty when there um, is an, an increase of androgen hormones, which can stimulate the amount of oil production 
produced by the sebaceous glands. So blackheads, whiteheads, pimples, and pustules are all present and easily infected with bacteria, okay? Acne treatments on page 335. Excessive oily and problem skin is one of the leading reasons clients seek out professional help. And it is one of the most important factors in an esthetician's practice. And that is true. You know, if you guys have ever or you will have clients that suffer from acne and being able to service them and help them and help minimize the appearance or just get their acne under control is so rewarding, okay? Because a lot of these clients, it's it really affects their self-esteem. They want to, you know, hide it. They want to make it go away. And a lot of times they think that just piling on a whole lot of makeup is going to make it go away. It can not be as visible, but we all know that sometimes that is really not the case. They could be making matters worse by applying heavy, heavy, heavy foundation, right? It's only going to clog their pores even more. So on page 336, in the illustration, you guys, it is basically showing the formation of acne, right? And pustules, pimples, like how does it happen, okay? In this illustration, it says, keratinized skin cells debris, which is plugs, number A. Okay, you see the picture there. It says, block sebum from wicking out along the hair shaft. Stagnant sebum, which is B, is broken down by bacterial enzymes into a short chain fatty acids. An irritated papule, which is C, is formed. Increased blood flow activates the immune system, D. Finally, white blood cells rush to the area to combat the foreign matter resulting in infection. And then pustules are formed, which is E. And that is usually when we feel like it's there's a large bump and we see a white head and we naturally want to extract it or pick at it, right? But we know not to do that, right? Because it's only going to make matters worse or lead to scarring our skin. So, but usually, again, that is how it is formed. Products and equipment for acne care, again, disincrustation, steam, extractions are all part of an oily and problem skin facial using AHAs and BHA treatments are also very effective. The use of sulfur mask, you guys, these are effective products that exfoliate the skin and dry blemishes, okay? AHAs, vitamin A or retinol, both retinol and retinol palmitate are forms of vitamin A. This topical vitamin benefits the skin by helping to reduce flaking and restore the appearance of the skin's suppleness. Benzoyl peroxide, put a star next to that if you don't already have it. This ingredient releases oxygen that kills bacteria as well as helps exfoliate the skin. Kojic acid, spot blemish treatment, you guys, and of course the increase of vitamin C, this oral vitamin has antioxidant value and obviously also healing effects. So a lot, a lot, a lot, okay? Extractions, I will show you personally how to go about doing extractions, okay? The right way, extracting methods, manual using um, extracting tools as well, okay? What else do we have on page 340, 341? It's now just going over performing an acne treatment procedure. It just, just has all the steps. Doing your skin analysis. Steam is applied. Using disincrustation solution. Performing extractions. On page 342, applying stringents or toners. Applying mask, moisturizers. Again, it's just going through a full facial. Again, I'm not going to read all of that word for word. I already did that. On page 344, I do want to talk a little bit about um, men's skincare. And that is because it has become a big part of the industry. Okay. Men are now spending more time and money, you guys, than ever before on improving their appearance. And they seek success in both their professional and social lives. So estheticians need to educate themselves on the key difference between a male and a female skin needs, all right? Overall, it's the same kind of needs. It's just different way about approaching male clients, right? 
So men often have larger pores and more active sebaceous glands, which can, that automatically tells us that they're going to have either combination skin or oily skin. At the same time, male clients often can become dehydrated from the use of soaps and shampoos and hot showers, right? And even shaving, right? So ironically, their skin can both be excessively oil and have surface dryness. Men need products and treatments that are hydrating, but also offer deep pore cleansing and pore refining. Now, marketing for men, you guys. Men's skincare needs are just as important as women's. It is becoming more common for men to use spa services. I don't think they're as shy, right? I think it's now like okay for them to go in and get facials. And honestly, the hardest part is getting them in. Once you get them on your treatment table, they're going to realize how amazing the service is, how relaxing, and on top of that, all the benefits that it comes with. So I always say the hardest part is getting them there. Once you get them there, most likely, all right, they're going to be loyal clients. You can always recommend products for them to use at home, but you want to take an easy approach. You don't want to sell them a 10 step routine. That's going to be a little bit too overwhelming for them. Okay. So let's talk about it. So to build the market, a salon can carry specific line for men. There are some skincare lines out there that are specifically for men, you guys. So most unisex product lines will work as well, as long as the packaging and uh, fragrance are not overly feminine. We don't want our products to have a lot of uh, fragrance anyway, so that shouldn't be a problem. Men typically have a larger sebaceous glands and oilier skin, okay? But they also need some protection. Men tend to neglect their skin care because it is not considered masculine or just a priority. Clients who are especially pleased with visible treatment results are more willing to try home maintenance programs. So when considering a men's skincare line, keep in mind several key points. Be sure the products are basic and the routines are simple. Men do not want highly fragranced feminine products. Okay, so for instance, lotion needs to be light without fragrance, be highly absorbent and have a matte finish. I'm pretty sure they do not want to look like, you know, a grease ball or too glowy, right, of the product. Men prefer simple routines and more of multi-purpose products. They would rather have a moisturizer that can be used both day and night and perhaps something that already contains sunscreen. Okay, so those are all really good key points. Also, tubes and pumps are easily to open and they're more male friendly than jars, right? I'm pretty sure you guys could agree with that. So again, yes, making, having a skin, having a facial treatment designed just for your male clients is ideal. So in your service menu, you can start thinking of a gentleman's facial, for example, and gentleman's facial will still be, you know, 45 minutes at least to an hour, just depending on all the steps that you are following based on their skin needs. Okay. So hopefully I can find a model soon so I can perform a a demo for you guys on a gentleman. So we'll work on that, but I do have a video that I'll send out to you guys to watch as well, okay? So on page 348, also folliculitis, you guys, which is inflammation of the hair follicle, meaning ingrown hairs, okay? Soda folliculitis, also known as razor bumps, resembles folliculitis without the infection. This condition are also a result of improper shaving techniques for men as well. So all of that should be highlighted already. Put a star next to soda folliculitis. It'll be a question on your chapter eight test. Whew, this was a long chapter and I know it can be a little overwhelming. Like I usually say, please don't neglect the procedures that are in the back of the chapter. It starts on page 349 and it goes all the way through. It's a long one. 370, my goodness, no, it goes all the way to 382. Very, very long, but it's very thorough. It's talking about post-service procedures, applying a sheet mask, performing extractions, 
all of this. So it's a very, very good, use, um, useful information. So don't ignore this. This is a chapter that I hope you guys are not just visiting it right now. This is a chapter that you want to visit multiple times. And as you guys grow and you start practicing more, all of this will just become more comfortable to you and everything will make more sense, I promise. Okay, so we are now going to review our chapter eight theory workbook, okay? And we're going to go to our exam review question. You guys will need to go back and do the fill in the blank questions on your own. Just a reminder, you guys do not need to do the crossword puzzles if you do not want to or like the charts, um, but definitely everything that's fill in the blank will help you. you. Guys doing this is really going to prepare you for your final state board exam and having this information for you guys to go back and review Trust me, you will appreciate it <laughs> once it's time. So for today, we're going to go over the exam review and I believe it starts on page 178, okay? Page 178. These are the multiple choice questions and answer. So here we go. A client wants to know why she should add a facial to her regular skincare. What can a facial provide a client beyond skincare? Okay, and again, you guys, I will try to give you the page number where you can find this information. So you can just write the page number as well so that you can always go back to if needed, okay? So number one, answers are stress reduction, B, fitness improvement, C, decreased appetite, or D, increased metabolism. Okay, a lot of times you have to read all your choices in order for you to choose the most appropriate answer. In this case would be stress reduction, right? We mentioned that getting a facial is not only beneficial, but it's really relaxing as well. So number one is A as an apple. Number two, Diane knows that her skin condition is affected by too much sun. So she wears protective clothing and sunscreen which of the following skin conditions does she most likely have? You can find this on page 333. Is it vitiligo, hyperpigmentation, hypopigmentation, notice how that has an O, or albinism, okay? She wears protective clothing and sunscreen, okay? Most likely she has hyperpigmentation, which is the overproduction of color, darker spots on the skin. And again, the sun really makes matters worse. So number two is B as in boy. Number three, which environmental aggravator would not affect acne, would not. Dirt, grease, humidity, or water? The answer for this one is D as in dog, water. Everything else will definitely make acne worse, right? So number three is D, D as in dog. Number four. Zoe would like to try something new to combat her acne, especially since the prom is about one month away. Which of the following procedures would you recommend she add to her home care twice per week? An enzyme peel, a clay mask, therapeutic sun exposure, an aggressive massage. The answer for number four is B, a clay mask. You can find this on page 338. 338. Okay. Let me see here. It's right at the top. It says a clay mask is recommended twice per week. A mask with camphor and sulfur also works well for oily skin. 338. Number five, which of the following procedures requires you to understand the angle of the hair follicle? Okay, you guys, 
this is extractions. So number five is B. Which of the following procedures requires you to understand the angle of the hair follicle? This will be extractions, B as in boy. And again, you can find this information on page 339, 339 on the textbook. Number six, preparation for extractions typically include all of the following except blank. Exfoliation, steaming, sunscreen, disincrustation. Okay, this can be found on page 375. Performing extractions. So in preparation for extraction, typically include all of the following except sunscreen. You do not need sunscreen to perform extractions, okay? You, sometimes you, we need to read the questions multiple times, or they try to trick us, all right? So number six is C as in cat, and you can find it on page 375 on the textbook. Number seven, the skin is affected by warmth in all of the following ways, except that it blanks. Softens the follicle, promotes effective cleansing, decreases circulation, or prepares the skin for extractions? The answer to number seven is C, as in cat. Decreases circulation. So, you guys, the skin is affected by warmth in all of the following ways, except that it decreases circulation. So yes, it softens the follicle. Warmthness softens the follicle. It promotes effective cleansing and prepares skin for extractions. We discussed that when we were talking about the use of steam, correct? So for this one, the answer is C, as in cat. Number eight. How would you describe extractions? The way that you can describe extractions, you guys, is by manually removing impurities and comedones from the follicles. Okay, so we know that comedones, it's the proper term for a black head or a white head. Okay, that's the proper term. And follicles is the proper term for pores. Okay, so manually removing impurities and comedones from follicles. So number eight is B as in boy, and you can find it on page 316. Number nine, when in the facial process should a calming, hydrating mask be applied? Okay, again, when in the facial process should a calming, hydrating mask be applied? Now, this is on page 316, and remember that when you're answering these questions, you wanna go based on what the book is saying, all right? Yes, we customize to the client needs. In this case, it is saying that you apply it at the end, okay? At the end. So number nine is C as in cat, write down page 316. Okay. Number 10, why should you offer clients water after performing services? To advertise the brand of water, <laughs> to upsell, to increase your tip, or to facilitate rehydration. Obviously, the one that makes the most sense here will be D, right? D as in dog. Number 10 is D as in dog. Number 11, Ellie has had a difficult morning and received a speeding ticket on her way to work. As she prepares to meet her first client, which of the following should she do? It says, never come into work when she is upset. Never discuss personal problems with the client. Share her problems with the client she knows well or discuss how to handle her problems with her clients. You guys, 
Never discuss personal problems with the clients. So number 11 is B as in boy. Number 11 is B. Number 12. What is not among the reasons clients should arrive 15 minutes prior to the appointment? What is not? Again, they try to trick you. One of the reasons they should not arrive early is to obviously help you prepare for the treatment room. That is your responsibility. So number 12 is C as in cat. Okay. Number 12 is C. Number 13, when should the client be shown the area where he or she can change clothes and store any belongings? Only when the client asks to see the area after completing the client consultation form at the end of the appointment or immediately upon arrival in the salon. 303, let's look at page 303. Three oh three. Okay. Number 13, you guys, is B. After completing the client consultation form, okay, you will then show them where they can change and store any belongings. Number 13 is B as in boy. Number 14, what should female clients be instructed to remove before a facial treatment? This is also on page 303. And the answer is B, their bra, okay? 14 is B, B as in boy. Number 15, who is responsible for instructing the client on how to get comfortable on the facial bed? The spa's assistant, the receptionist, the manager, or you, the esthetician? Clearly, it will be your responsibility. So number 15 is D as in dog, the esthetician. Number 16, when in the process of draping the hair, do you place a towel on the headrest? You guys, at the beginning of the process, right? At the beginning of the process. Number 16 is C, as in cat. Number 17, which of the following is an important benefit of facials to mention to clients? The fact that they deep cleanse and exfoliate, they address conditions such as dryness and oiliness, lessen the appearance of blemishes and wrinkles, all of the above. The answer is D, all of the above. You want to make sure that you explain the importance of all the benefits to your clients. So the answer to 17 is D. D is in dog. Number 18, Desiree is getting an express facial today. Which step in a basic facial will you most likely skip? I read this. The answer is B, extractions. Okay, number 18 is B. Extractions you usually skip during a mini express facial. Number 19, Star is a new student and does not understand why estheticians need to know what a client is doing for home care. What do you say to her? What you say to her is that it is probably the most important factor in successful skincare as it impacts what products and procedures you will use. So number 19 is B as in boy. Number 19 is B. 20. What should you do for about 15 minutes after the first treatment with a new client? Explain proper home care. You want to explain to them proper home care. Again, create a plan for them. Sell them retail if you have it available. Explain to them how to use it properly. So number 20 is C as in cat. You can find it on page 320. 
21, which of the following is true of an express facial? Well, the fact that it has fewer steps than a basic facial. So 21 is A, and that was on page 322. It has fewer steps. Number 22, there are many variations of a basic facial. What should you tell a client who wants to know the approximate length of a full basic facial? It usually is 60 minutes, you guys, about one hour. So 22 is D as in dog. That's also on page 322. Number 23, I hope you guys are following along. What skin type is associated with the treatment goal of stimulating sebum production? Okay, we're stimulating, meaning we lack it, right? So that means dry skin, okay? So 23 is C as in cat, and that's on page 323. 323, okay, right there on page 323. 24, a client has very dry skin. What type of enzyme peel should you use to exfoliate during treatment? You want to use a gentle one, okay? You want to use a gentle enzyme peel. So 24 is A can also be found on page 323. 25, what is not a recommended treatment for dry skin? Harsh exfoliation, okay? You do not want to use harsh exfoliation if you have drier skin. So 25 is D, 25 is D as in dog. 26, what can be caused by smoking, extreme weight loss, and psychological disease? You guys, B, accelerated skin aging. Okay. Accelerated skin aging, B as in boy. 27, what do facial treatments offer in addition to relaxation? Well, it improves the skin's health. 27 is B, and that's on page 299. 27 is B, it improves skin's health. What is true of facial treatments? What is true of facial treatments? We're on number 28. Well, they are the core treatments that estheticians perform, okay? 28 is A. 29, Jack is considering having a facial but isn't clear on what a facial treatment involves. Which of the following best describes a facial, okay? Is it A, professional service designed to improve and rejuvenate the skin? B, application of makeup to make the client's face more attractive? C, medical procedure involving the use of injective chemicals? Or D, surgical procedure more commonly known as a facelift? My goodness, these answers. Okay, 29, you guys, is A, right? 29 is A, professional service designed to improve and rejuvenate the skin. 29 is A. 30, a client thinks they may need a prescription for acne care. Who can issue prescriptions? A physician, right? B, 30 is B as in boy. 31, Jolene likes to stay current on trends in the aesthetic industry. How often should she take a class or go to a conference? Simple, at least once a year, okay, at least once a year. So question number 32, the manager of a spa emphasizes that estheticians need to speak to clients in a quiet and professional manner. Why is this helpful? 
Well, it's helpful because clients will relax and enjoy their treatment, all right? So 32 is C as in cat. 32 is C, okay? 33, disposable cotton to remove facial mass can be referred to as a cotton compress. Cotton compress. 33 is B as in boy. 34, which of the following is not a reason to remove jewelry before performing service? Which of the following is not a reason, okay? And the only one that's appropriate is A. Jewelry might clash with your uniform, okay? 34 is A, and that's on page 301. 35, we're almost there, you guys. A client is in a rush and can't stay for a full facial. You advise a mini facial because its length is only 30 minutes. 30 minutes. So 35 is C. 35 is C. 36. In a men's skincare treatment, what should you do after cleansing the client's skin? Okay. After you cleanse the client's skin, you complete a thorough skin analysis with the use of a magnifying lamp. So 36 is B as in boy, and you can find this on page 361. 37, if permitted in your state, lamp scents, okay, are used for all of the following except nodules, nodules, A. 37 is A. Page 339, page 339. 38, but when during the facial procedure should you apply moisturizer and or sunscreen? Question mark, okay? At the end, it's a given, right? At the end, 38 is C as in cat. You can find that on page 371. 38 is C, 39. Jean notices that a male client has folliculitis. How will she explain it to him? Folliculitis is an inflammation of the hair follicles. Folliculitis is an inflammation of the hair follicles. 39 is D as in dog. 39 is D and it's on page 348. 40. What is the common name for soto folliculitis? The answer, you guys, is razor bumps. Okay, razor bumps. I actually read it. It's on page 348. 40 is B as in boy. It's on page 348. 41. What causes soto folliculitis? Improper shaving. Improper shaving causes soto folliculitis. So 41 is B as in boy. Same page, 348. 42. Why should comedogenic products be avoided for clients with acne? Well, because these products tend to aggravate or produce acne symptoms. So why would you want to use them, right? So 42 is D as in dog, and you can find it on page 337, 337. 42 is D, D as in dog. 43, during an acne treatment, why is it important to soften the outmost layer of the skin prior to beginning any extractions? because the skin may be tight and dehydrated. That is why, okay? So 43 is A, page 341 on the textbook. That's where you can find the answer. 43 is A. 44, astringent application is critical after extractions for all of the following reasons except removing retinas. Astringent is not going to remove retinas, okay? Astringent is going to rehydrate the skin, is going to reduce secondary infection, and is going to cleanse the skin, okay? 
but it is not going to remove redness. So for number 44, the answer is D as in dog. And you can look it up on page 342. 45, you have made it to the end, congratulations. Number 45, all of the following are important considerations for men's skincare product line except for heavy lotions, okay? They do not want anything that's too heavy. So 45 is B as in boy, okay? And you can find it on page 346, 346. All right, you guys, so that concludes today's class. I hope you were able to follow along with me. I know that was a lot of information, a lot to take in, but like I mentioned earlier, I'm pretty sure that as you keep growing in this program, everything will start to make more sense to you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye, guys.